Hi, my name's Josh. I'm about to take some acid and then I'm going to go to a open comedy mic night and tell us some of my original jokes. Hi, I'm Jamie Tate, Vice Journalist, and I like watching people trip on acid. I especially like watching people trip on acid in really awkward situations. Tonight I'm going to be going with our friend Josh as he performs open mic nights in London on acid. Hi Josh. <laughs> You're right, Jamie. <laughs> when we were filming downstairs a minute ago you seemed a bit worried. What's yeah, going on? you were definitely out of the room for like an uncalled for amount of time. I think it was probably about four minutes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, well, it been four long, long minutes. And how are you feeling right now? Talk us through it. Yeah, a bit fucked, really. What, what do you see? Are you getting any kind of visuals? Um, yeah, I can see. That's good. And then, uh, do you know what? My mind's gone about three triples inside itself now. <laughs> I can't fucking understand what's going on. <laughs> oh, this is so weird. I could tell it was starting to kick in because well, everything was getting a lot more vibrant to start with. Visuals started coming along. You held your hand out in front of me and it was like withering away and I felt embarrassed to tell you. I felt like you were going to take it as an insult, so I didn't. Am I going to get through this? I think you're going to get through this. I'm probably going to throw up by the end of it. Are you feeling nauseous? Everything's very trailey. So, um, that's happening. Can you take care of me? <laughs> oh, Josh, I'll take care of you. Oh my God, what the fuck am I doing? I was kind of not enjoying it and not giving myself a chance to enjoy it because I was so busy dealing with the, uh, the whole premise and the reason we were doing it. Do you know what's really hard to like comprehend right now? What? The fact that I'm in a documentary right now. It's just such an intense environment to start with. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Doubled on to the fact that I'm on acid. <laughs> uh... You're panicking a little bit, but you don't need to panic at all. In the flat, uh, my mental state went from not great to, to pretty awful, really. As it became apparent that we were going to have to leave soon, I just, my mind was like, shit, like I'm only just getting used to this environment and having to think about what I'm going to do. Uh, I got that thing where you kind of, everything's quite sort of focused in on just the fact that I didn't want to go. <laughs> no, what are we doing? We're getting in the cab. Okay, okay. Ready? Can I just have a little bit more water? Are you done? Ready to go? I can't work out the stairs, let alone... Okay, there's just... No, oh, fucking hell. I'll be, I'll be with you on the stairs. Cheers, man. Thank you. Know. It was just becoming more and more like, okay, this is happening, this is happening. That pressure was just sort of insurmountable at that point. Can't do this. <laughs> I don't know. All right, let's just, should we get in the cab and see? Like, you'll be in a different Oh, room. no, 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 okay. Just two seconds backwards from that. Let me just process that. I feel like a lot of that pressure was definitely backed up by myself, and you guys could probably sense that, so you were sort of willing to push me along. It was horrible, really, in the cab. I mean, apart from anything, it was ruining my trip. On top of the fact that I was, you know, literally on the way to the place and every second was taking me closer to it, which meant there was a sort of very sharp growth of dread in my mindset. <sighs> now we're on the way now, aren't we? For all I knew at that point, you were going to shove me on a stage in a West End theatre in front of like thousands of people expecting me to do a song and dance. Like I literally had no idea. OK, let's just, just go for it and see what happens, eh? Do I go walk here? Is this a point? It's so intense. 
It's a picture of Michael Jackson. It's so, so intense right now. <laughs> and he's dead. <laughs> Nearly dead. The environment around Shaftesbury Avenue was so intense. Um, it felt very much like I got to the sort of culminating scene in uh, some, some action film where something very, very bad is about to happen and it's very, very close. Like if it was a heist film, like we were about to go into the bank or something and I was going to get shot. Is it like three in the afternoon or is there a bunch of kids around? It's amazing. I didn't feel like I should be around them in my state of mind. Not that I was going to do anything, but uh, not that I was dangerous, but it just felt wrong. Yeah, getting to the club was, was interesting. What does that dance you mean? Do I want you to empty my wallet and leave me sexually frustrated? Then, babe, you've been doing that all fucking week. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I've bullied myself into doing that. That's not good. Are you OK to go on? Well, fuck it, I'm here now. It just looks like a cool human experiment, doesn't it? It's fucking what it is. <laughs> Do you think you can handle it? Do you think you can mentally handle it? Probably not. Everything like that. What is that? Like some sort of... He banged in there. But is that like some sort of... I'm, a... I'm a getting... What is going on? You must know. What's going on? Up to that point, basically, everything become sort of like this... This black hole of despair around me. And it sounds like it's hyperbole, but honestly... It was horrible. It just seemed like I was faced with the most just unclimbable mountain. I was just like, if I go up there, I'm just not gonna be able to face the, the crowd. They're gonna start jeering me because I'm probably not gonna be able to say anything. I'll be so frightened. Make some noise for Josh Harrow! So when they called my name out and they cheered, I just remember sort of going into auto function. Part of me was just like, you're gonna do it now. It was definitely some part of me just sort of taking me up there and it felt like destiny. I remember getting up there and then it was silent and it was suddenly like, because it was silent, I, my mind kind of took a breath. There's this space for me to think. I may as well just tell my joke. So, uh, the SAS, they've, uh, they've not got uh, any people left in them, so they, they have interviews, open interviews, and a farmer comes along and he goes, I want to join the SAS, I'm really brave. And they say, well, what's brave about, about you? What's what in your life? And he says, well, one day I was out farming and the tractor broke down three miles away from where I lived with my wife, Mrs. Farmer. And she... <laughs> <coughs> the tra yeah, the tractor, the tractor broke down. <laughs> I, look, uh, I looked into the tractor engine and it bolted back to life and it ripped one of my arms off. So I was like, shit. <laughs> I've only got one arm. And so I grabbed the, that arm and ran all the way back. Mrs. Farmer, she sewed it back on. <laughs> and uh, yeah, here I am. And they said, that's very brave. Well done. <laughs> You're definitely in to the SAS. And he said, thank you. I'll see you on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> no one gets it. <laughs> As I said, at that point, I was, I, my, all the anxiety kind of was melting away. And um, I was starting to have fun, actually. It was like chariots of fucking fire. I was like, I'm going. I'm like, and I'm on my way now. And then literally, like, almost running into your arms. <laughs> like, I fucking did it. Seriously, violin started playing in my head. It was like, da da da. Fucking <laughs> amazing. <laughs> when you were going up, I was, I was very anxious for you. And I, I did feel a bit like I was going to die. But um, I thought, I thought you, you did a lot better than I thought you were going to. How long do you think you were on stage for? Probably about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I remember just being very, very happy. Um, but, and I was still tripping quite hard, so it was really cool because it was like I could enjoy my trip. And although I was in quite an intimidating environment, I, feel, I felt so invincible. I felt like I'd achieved such a massive thing that that threatening environment was really not threatening anymore. It was just quite fun to play around in. Uh, and I, my inhibitions completely dropped. 
probably so far that I probably annoyed and pissed off quite a lot of the public that I interacted with. Did you see Josh's performance? Yes. Uh, what, what did you think of Josh as a first time comedian? Um, yeah, first time was, was cool, you know, pretty confident. Um, Have you ever done stand up? I've never done stand up on acid. I don't think so. But if you've got photos, what, I what do, do apologize. You think, what do you think it would be like? Um, I think I think you could do it, and the audience wouldn't actually know. Are oh, no, you on acid? Yeah. No, seriously. Yeah. That's fucking crazy. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's just not. It's fine. It's nothing. Like the reality <laughs> is. The reality is. <laughs> no idea what we've yeah. been through. And what about the guy you spoke to outside? Do you remember much of the conversation? I was elated. I was almost ecstatic and euphoric at that point. So I was, I was carefree. But I just couldn't help myself because he was just so absurd to me. I wanted to play with him. Um, like a kitten plays with a ball of wool. Oh my God! What are you talking about? I thought he was a fool. <laughs> what I took away from it, I mean, the whole night was hugely introspective, it's an introspective drug. I felt like I was starring in my own movie, which I actually was in a way. Can you help me light this? Like, I'm fucked. Like, I can't even light this cigarette. It was all very, very strange and very intense and introverted and with, with acid and the way it enhances your emotions, it sort of amplifies them. One of the emotions that it really amplified for me was pride in myself, which was really, really good. It was amazing. Achievement's only worth it if you feel pr proud of what you've achieved. That was actually an amazing experience. It was incredibly cathartic. And it made me actually have an appreciation for religion and things like that because I actually thought, you know, people who spend their lives just doing something for this higher being, that is actually quite a nice thing. It, you feel like you're giving something. But then I realised that I was equating you to my God. And... <laughs> And, and uh, yeah, so that was probably not true. <laughs> See you later. Bye. Come on, Josh. <laughs> Gotta go.